You can't place the complex numbers just as a point on a line. So that begs the question, if this is where all the real numbers are, where are the complex numbers? Okay. Now to answer this question, I want you to draw with me, if you've got a ruler there, it would be very helpful. I want you to draw with me this tool that we use to represent real numbers. We call it the? Number line. We just call it the number line, right? So draw one with me. That's pretty horrendous, but you get the idea. On the number line, right? What's wonderful about the number line is it gives us a geometric meaning for all of the arithmetic that we've been doing. Right? It gives us a geometric meaning for all the arithmetic we've been doing. Okay? Let's think about some things, and maybe you want to jot some of these down. Okay? Um, we know a number's a point on a line, a number's a point on a line. What does it mean geometrically? I know what the arithmetic is, but what does it mean geometrically if I add some positive number, there's a new bit of notation for you, okay? You know what the R, the fancy R means, it means a real number. If you see a little plus as a superscript up there, it means a positive real number. Okay, so if you add a positive real number to any number you like, suppose your number is three right now, okay? And you add some positive real number to it, what geometric effect does that have? Okay, it moves you to the right, okay? Now I want to, I want you to write this with me. Um, we have a fancier technical name in mathematics for move to the right. It starts with a T, you first met it back in year 7. It's when you take something and you move it over, we call that, uh, now transformations is the general idea, you geometrically change something. We mean translate. So you add a real positive number, you translate to the right. Now I could say subtraction, I could say subtraction, but instead of saying subtraction, I'm going to say, what if you add a real number that's negative? If you add a negative number, what effect does that have? You're going to still translate, but to the left. Okay, stay with me. All these familiar operations that you've been working with for such a very long time, they all have a geometric meaning like this. We've just covered addition and subtraction. What's the next operation? Multiplication. multiplication. Okay. So again, I'm going to follow this pattern. If you multiply by a real positive number, okay, think about this one. This takes some thought. Okay. Again, if your number was 3, and you multiply by some real positive number like 2, Okay, how do you explain geometrically what's happening? Any suggestions? Again, we've got some language here. Try and use some language that we've used in geometry before. Yeah, um, it translates up. Okay, so if I talk about translation, I, I said three, right? So I'm going to represent three as that arrow. Okay, it's like, look, there I am over there. If I multiply by a real positive number, like say two, have I got enough space there? I do. Okay. Three times two, of course, is six. six. Okay. So my new number, after having multiplied by a real positive number, is over here. Now I know I've written, I've drawn that green line above, but that's just so it doesn't overlap. Have I moved up or down? I, I haven't actually, right? I'm still on this infinitesimally thin line. It's just that I am further along. Okay. Now, how would you describe what the difference is between the blue shape and the green shape? What's the difference? Yeah, it's double the length, right? What you've done is, in fact, translation is just moving back and forth, and your size is preserved, right? But I haven't preserved size here, right? In fact, what I've done is I have scaled, but I've scaled in a particular direction. Which way am I going? I've gone to the right, okay? Did I have to go to the right? Do I always go to the right if I multiply by a positive real number? The answer is no. If I didn't start with 3, suppose I started with, say, negative 2, and I multiply it by, by a positive real number again, I'm not going to go to the right, am I? I'm going to go to the left. In other words, I'm going to scale in the same direction. Whatever direction I'm already facing, right? You're facing to the right, you'll go more to the right. You're facing to the left, you'll go more to the left. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay, follow the pattern with me. What's the next thing? Add real positive, add real negative. I'm going to multiply, come on, you've got some language now, by a real negative number. Okay, now think, think. I'm going to scale again. 
aren't I? Because it's still multiplication. But what changes? Yeah, I'm going to flip over that way, aren't I? I'm going to scale in the opposite direction. Okay, now we're almost there into the complex world. We just need one particular thing left. Um, do you remember we defined i? We defined i as the square root of? Good. So this number negative 1 is very important to me, okay? When I look over here, right, negative 1 is a particular version of these, right? In fact, it's a particular negative real number that I can multiply by, right? So if you've got some number that you start with, and then the particular negative real number you multiply by is negative 1. How would you describe that? What's happened to the scale? It stayed, it stayed the same. So if you started with 3, you'll go to negative 3, so the size is the same. But then what's happened? The direction has changed, right? Now the direction has changed. Surely I've got language for this. Translation, scaling, what's the fancy word I would use to say? It's gone the other way, the exact opposite way. This is a reflection, right? That's all you need to say. I mean, I can say, now I have the same size facing the opposite direction, but you can just use the word reflect, and that's exactly what it means. Okay? Now, keep this idea in your head that multiplied by negative 1 is reflection. How's that related to this imaginary unit I've introduced? Well, negative 1, by definition, is i squared. Yes? Now, i is not a, a real number, right? So I can't quite fit it into this scheme. But here, i squared is just i times i, right? So whatever multiplication by negative 1 is, which I've got over there, if I do this twice, that's the same as doing this once. Do you see that? Like, that's what the equals means after all, right? Doing this twice, multiplying by i twice, is the same as multiplied by negative 1 once. Make sense? Now what would it mean to be half a reflection? Right? You, that's kind of weird, half a reflection. In order to get more at better understanding what's going on here, instead of saying reflection, I've got one more translation, sorry, transformation word that I haven't used yet back from year 7. Right? We had translation, that means slight. You've got, you've got scale, and then you've got reflection, which is like flipping. What's the last transformation that you haven't talked about? Rotation. Rotation, right? Now, reflection in this context is the same as rotation by what? Now, normally you would say 180 degrees, wouldn't you? Okay? But now today, we're going to say you're rotating by pi radians. Which suddenly gives us a way, it gives us a, a tool for expressing this. If doing negative 1 is rotating by pi radians, so going all the way opposite, then what does it mean to go halfway? It's a right angle. It's pi on 2 radians. It's 90 degrees. Okay? So now I need not just a number line like this, right? but underneath this, get your ruler out. You're going to need more than a line, aren't you? Right? If you draw your familiar number line, and you've got there's 0, and the number I was thinking of was 3, okay? when you multiply by i the first time, you're going to do not pi radians, but pi on 2. Okay? So that's going to lift you off of this real number axis. right? There's like another axis like this. Okay? So what's going to happen is from 3, I'm going to rotate around like this. Okay? When you multiply by i once, you're going to end up at 3i. And any multiple of a, an imaginary number isn't on the real line. That's why it's up there. Okay? What happens when I multiply by i again, a second time? You're going to cancel that i squared out as negative 1, yes? So you're going to come down to negative 3 over here, which is unsurprising because it's another rotation of pi on 2. Does this make sense? So all of the arithmetic that you know has a geometric, a geometric meaning. One of the lovely things about this diagram is it gives you an explanation right away for what i to the 4 is. 
What I have four? One. It's one. Why is it one? Well, we know the arithmetic of it, right? Um, I squared, I squared, negative one, negative one, one, okay? But geometrically what it means is that if you do one, two, three, four quarter turns, right? Four turns of pi on two, then you're gonna land back where you started. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, so this guy here, you need to give him a name, right? Um, you might think, that looks a lot like something I've done with, dealt with before. This is the Cartesian plane, right? And it does have a lot to do in common with the Cartesian plane, which is why, well, I'll get to that in a second, but this is not a Cartesian plane. The Cartesian plane matches up a real number with another real number. We call them x and y, right? But this is not real numbers, is it, right? What's up here? These are imaginary numbers. So instead of talking about an x-axis and a y-axis, I talk about the real axis and the imaginary axis. 